G'day, welcome to Country Music World. I'm Mick. And I'm Jay. Today we're going to take you down to the central coast of New South Wales and talk to the front guy, one of Australia's hottest bands. They're a golden guitar winning group and they've just returned from their very first European tour. Subscribe to the channel, like and share the videos around, sit down, relax, and let's get to know a little bit more about Adam Eckersley. All right, Jay, so let's cut across and we'll uh, catch Adam. He's on uh, Daddy Daycare duty today. Have Daddy we got you online, mate? There you go, G'day, Adam. fellas. How you going? G'day, Good buddy. Morning. Thanks for uh, joining us here at Country Music World, and we appreciate you taking some time out of your busy day. We and, do. Absolute uh, pleasure. I, I'm not sure that, it'll be complete, sure that it'll be completely uninterrupted. It's my little girl's fourth birthday today. Brooke is here. She's hanging out. Sounds like Tiggy's in the next room playing Brooke some songs on the guitar, so... Well, we better... Yeah. Um, we better well, happy birthday yep. to Tiggy. Mate. We better pass on a big country <laughs> music world. Happy birthday to little Tig. Four, eh? That's a good I'll age, mate. i that on top of Ty's age. She's bloody four already. Aren't they a great age at four? It's not, they're fun. They're yeah. little humans there. They, they well, know you, everything that's going on. You've got nearly a four-year-old. Yeah. You got got, I've got a four-year-old. Really? They're yeah. a fun age, man. That's yeah. cool. They're so a fun age. We know where you're at, mate. <laughs> yeah. So, Ads, let's talk about Europe, mate. You um, you took off over the, got on a plane, you and the boys jumped on a plane here a couple of months ago now, and you just, you just took over and you took on the Europeans. Tell us about the Europe tour, mate. Did it Was it everything you wanted it to be? And what was the reception like from some of these European countries? Because I'm thinking they probably don't all speak English. How did, how did it work out, mate? Man... It was awesome overall. That's a you know big statement to say. It was awesome, but it was because it was hard work. Um, it was interesting. But one thing, when we had set off to go over there, we had no expectations. So it's hard to say that it lived up to it or whatever. But um, one thing that kind of just spun us out was, um, I mean, it shouldn't spin us out, but none of us fellas in the band are that connected to social media we should be better at it but it's such a small world now with um social media we turn up to these uh towns in spain and there's mountains you know, where it was literally a you know one skinny little track up through the beautiful countryside get there this tiny little village and um you know there's a basically a town hall and a small little bar and 300 people came out and a lot of them were <laughs> singing our lyrics back to us and requesting songs and what have you. And we're just going, how in the hell do you know we exist? <laughs> but the uh, promoter that took us over there, they just do a fantastic job, Teenage Head Music. And it, we sort of started to figure out that there's a whole network over there that follow uh, whatever Teenage Head Music are doing, basically. And, um, you know, they they look, keep up with who's coming over and then they research it. And as a result, we go over with a, with an inbuilt um, crowd, which was, was just awesome. Spain, they just went nuts from the first song. Um, front row, just, you know, all night going crazy. Germany were just as awesome to play to, but reacted completely different. They. You know, I think they've mastered the Mannequin Challenge. A few times they kind of were like, you know, and then once once you played to them, they just warmed and just, you know, they were just an amazing crowd. Spain and Germany both, they just made us feel so welcome and, and what have you. And, um, and then the Netherlands, same thing, just awesome. Belgium uh, and France, all of them really were just great crowds, but you could see... That was the other spin out. I guess it was uh, a lot of it was um, me kind of not knowing what to expect, but the the different cultures were so evident in the different areas we went to and what have you, and um, how they enjoyed their music was different, and what songs they'd react to were different. And but one thing was the same everywhere that they just gave us all their energy and kind of made us give it to them, you know, like, it was a few, few weeks we were doing six shows in a row, and we were, you know, pretty stuffed getting to the venue, we'd done 10,000 kilometres, um, 22 shows in 34 days, over five countries, so 
towards the back end of a couple of these six-day runs, we're going, oh, I don't know what I've got left in me. But every night you turn up and they just throw energy at you and we had to do our best to match it. So it was pretty amazing. We'll definitely go back there again. And, um, you know, the whole thing that you couldn't communicate with the language, well, we didn't speak Spanish or German really well. We did learn how to order a beer in every country. <laughs> Good you know, to see you got priority, priorities. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I, I did find out apparently um, in Spain, uh, some people were telling telling me a few um, things to yell out in the crowd to rev them up. They're well known kind of uh, statements that people yell out on the crowd. Yeah, brother barn. To get exactly the um, something, I, and I won't say it in case I get it wrong again. But I found out after a couple of shows that I basically um, called the whole room full of people. I said their mothers were all uh, ladies of the night, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, didn't, didn't mean to do that. Whoops. <laughs> Mm, okay, nice. so uh, <laughs> so we're um, so in actual yeah, fact we're lucky we got you back to Australia safely. <laughs> yeah, I think they took it with pretty good humour because oh, I was really hammering it too. So, yeah, someone said, oh, you, you just didn't get that part right, and that kind of changes the whole meaning of the saying. <laughs> hey, mate, do you um? I mean, you know, you, you seem still pretty happy about the whole tour, and I can see the buzz sort of coming back into you, just remembering it. Do you think a lot of that's got right at the start of that? You said you didn't go into it with any expectations. Do you think that summarises AEB as a whole? Because every, I mean, I've known you for a long time, and I've never known you ever to go into really anything other than, oh man, I'm just going to try it. And you still have that now, which I think is, I think that's a really big part of Adam Eckersley band is, you know, that the other boys in the band too are just like they just cruise around and they're happy, and if a crowd pops. You see you guys live at that moment going, wow, look what's happening. Mm. And you yeah. think there's something in that, I think, and that's yeah, that's a of, cool thing you've always had, man. Part of the appeal of the band, yeah. I, I think, think so, that. you know. I think it's a, yeah, man, well, you know what? I think right at the ground level of what us fellas do, we enjoy playing music together. So we're always kind of like, so long as we get the opportunity to do that, we're already winning. And... Um, then everything else is a surprise. Because I, and a lot of the time too, I reckon, um, if we've gone into things and maybe had a little bit of an expectation, they're usually the ones that you end up walking away from going, oh, it didn't quite live up to the yeah what we thought it'd be. So it's better to just go in and, and sort of go, who knows, let's just go and plan to rock out whether six people show up or 600 or whatever. And, um, that's a good, that's if a good you're outlook. satisfied with six, you're yeah. just going to be blown away with 600. That's that's a really good outlook. I like yeah, that. I think awesome. if it's if you just leave it that simple, then it's still and it's always. And I know you're going to love this. It's only ever about the music. Whatever else happens is a bonus. That's it, man. It is. Um, you know, like we started uh, doing, you know, ticketed ticketed tour um, last year. It was actually when seeing you fellas up at. Townsville were on the first mm. tour. We'd done a few scattered ticketed shows or what have you, but we thought, you know, let's take a punt and, and do a tour. Um, so we didn't, again, didn't have any expectations and we had some really great numbers in the crowd and, and some smaller numbers in, in towns we hadn't been to. But every gig had its own uh, appeal and some of the smaller crowds were just as fun to play as some of the big ones because we were basing our success or failure on on the number of people that showed up we basically wanted to make sure whoever came to the show uh left um really a fan i guess yeah. you know yeah and then the idea is that we'll keep going back and hopefully we've given them a good night and they come back and bring their friends and it just sort of grows like that and yeah well i knew it was going to be a good night when the first song the intro of the first song took like nine minutes i thought Yes. <laughs> this is my type of show right here. It's not about the songs, it's about the music. I love that. So I just, I actually, I had uh, two beers during your first song. So I thought, <laughs> I love this. This is my type of night. No, I was just going to say, it's real, but been really interesting. Like, we love jamming. And, um, and it's been interesting sort of trying to gauge the audiences that um, are going to come along with it for the journey. 
and some of them are kind of like, hey, it's cool that you do it, um, you know, every now and then, but kind of lost us in that little part. So we're, now we've sort of uh, not, you know, not that we're um, getting it right every time. You just go and do your show. At the end yeah. of the day, and people either like you or they don't. But it is, it's fun to kind of go, oh, are they, is, are the people come along for the journey with us or have we lost them or whatever? And yeah. Because all of it, all of that stuff affects where those jams go to and well, where we take them and all that stuff. But mate, it's, it's a real fun connection thing between the audience and the band, I reckon. I think mm. it's always, you know, in saying that, I, I think it's always going to be something Adam Eckersley Band is going to be up against. I think we're going to be up against the wall. because, And the reason I say this is because the people that are saying, oh, you lost me in that moment, you lost me in that moment, and no disrespect meant it to our audience at all, but they're just crammed so full of three minute, 27 second songs right now that that's all they know. <laughs> so they get it on the radio, they get it on the TV, they get it at the live gigs. And all of a sudden True. you'll come across a band like AEB, Zach Brown is another band that'll do it. <laughs> if you go and watch Charlie Daniels band, these guys are the same. They'll come out and they'll do a 15 minute song yeah. because they're a musical yeah. band, yeah. you know? And I mean, the first well, time I saw Zach Brown band, we're all into do that very same thing. The yep. Orman Brothers, Marshall Tuck Band. Yep. Like you said, Charlie Daniels. I was always been a big Love fan of Charlie, Charlie Daniels. Daniels. Yep. That was kind of my, um, you know, when I think country music, a lot of it was the Charlie Daniels band and stuff. And, and I mean, you got like Devil Went Down to Georgia, but then you got Still in Saigon and stuff like that. And well, you never did, did, did we never get together. <laughs> there. I mean, that was rock and stuff. I want to get the guitars and let's just do it live right now. Yeah. <laughs> let's do that, that'd be cool. But, you know, I think, you know, and I don't mean to, to there's no insults ever put towards our audiences, but it, they're just so comfortable in that what they're used to. And all of a sudden, I, and I think you guys will always be up to it, up against it to a certain element that some people will be going, oh, man, there's not enough lyrics being sung in this song or... Shouldn't they be onto another one now? So, you know, but, <laughs> but it actually it can work in the opposite way. I think too, it will. I think, well, I think it is. You know, once you guys get a fan, yeah, they'll stay forever. They're fans forever. Yeah, you know, like well, that's that's you know, what we're finding back. again. Yeah. yeah, we're so lucky. The the um the group of people that seem to be following the band and becoming um, fans are really staunch. Yeah, fans yeah. and. They mightn't have necessarily came from a country music background or a rock and roll background or whatever. They seem to be just music lovers and and uh, just digging what we're doing. So well, we're really I, lucky in that <laughs> respect. The thing I love about AEB, man, you you get you get your southern rock and definitely a southern rock. You bring that Charlie's Daniels vibe in it, that Travis Tritt area. You know, it's like a there's that edgy southern rock thing. You've got your your blues and your, you know, your normal straight down contemporary rock. Yep. Then you've got this soul thing happening as well. And there's, there's like all of these cool styles of music that make people's hearts beat, you know, jammed into this with country lyrics. There's nothing wrong with that, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, nothing wrong with hey, that. Hey, that works for me too. That kind of works. Oh, yeah. I think I think I yeah. should put that on your CV. That actually, yeah, yeah, that's pretty great. Pretty close, yeah, isn't that it? Down. It's we'll pretty write close. that down. We'll write that down for you. Yeah, that'll, that'll go really good. You can use that, man. I'll let you have that. It's pretty yeah. good. It's pretty you good. Know awesome. what? We love. Um, <laughs> at times, um, we've had people let it like let us know that a certain song or whatever has expressed a feeling that they haven't been able to express. You know, and we talk about it a lot. Um, like. Oh, I want to live in someone's lounge room when we write a song. I want them to have a part of their soundtrack of their life. And I want them to kind of go, um, oh, they feel the same way as I do. Or, you know, oh, well, you know, those dudes are, you know, struggling to express how they feel to their missus. Or, or they've just had a blue as well. Or whatever it might be. It's just like we love to be able to, I mean, I can't convince, convincingly sing a song about, um, you know, getting moonlight romantic, blah, 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 on a Friday night down by the riverside. <laughs> uh, it's not that I, I don't want to be romantic with my wife. It's just that, you know, I've been married for seven years. We've got a daughter and, 
so we're not out every Friday night partying with people. And so I'm not, and I'm not having a go at that. I'm just saying there's other people that sell that so much better than sure. what I can yeah. and what we can. So we try and stick with what we know and write about what we know, and hopefully, if it, uh, you know, is coming from a true place, we're probably not the only people experiencing experiencing it in their lives. You know, yeah. yeah. Well said. Well said, mate. Adam, um, so what are we looking forward to with AEB over the next year? Are we going to see some new music, or where are you heading, mate? Well, we've um, we have been slowly adding a few songs to our live set. Mm -hmm. We really wanted to road test as many songs as we could before we go to the studio on this album. Um, basically, because there's no better way to figure out whether something's going to work than putting it in front of an audience and because even if they don't yell out that's crap <laughs> they'll see in their body language and what have have you will um let you know and also too there's been songs that in the shed we've played and we're all going oh, man that's cool that's cool and then we'll go and play it live and for whatever reason Doesn't it just right. never comes up in conversation again yeah yeah it just didn't didn't connect with us or the audience so we've been slowly put i think we've got four that we're marking around within the set and there's a handful of other ones that we're just um you know a jam away from putting them in the set to try out so as soon as we feel as though we've got the um songs and we'd, we'd love to go in with 20 odd songs and that we'd happy happily put on the album and then um cut it down to 10 or 11 or whatever hey um adam mate do you with with Adam Eckersley Band, so the new album that you're going to be looking at, is it important to you that all the songs come from in-house AEB, or, or are you happy to outsource songs? What, you, what are you wanting for this next one, mate? Is it all from you? It's a hard and fast rules, but like I was saying in the when we're talking about um, what I feel as though we can deliver well, like. I've got to know that I can connect to a lyric is a real big one. Whether I've written it or not, it's like we recorded the Neil Young song uh, on the second album. We hadn't done a cover of anything before, but there's some covers, you know, then covers that you just connect with and you wish you wrote it. Yeah. And, and uh, it feels, still feels right playing or whatever. Yeah, um, every Neil Young song ever. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So. Yeah. You know, it, there's no hard and fast rules, but majority of the time I'd say um, there'd be some combination of AEB yeah. has written this song. Um, generally speaking, I'll be, you know, uh, in the right because I'll, I kind of want to put my bit on the, the lyrics and make sure I connect to the stuff. But I might write a song with Scotty, I might write a song with Dan or Benny. Um, there might be me, Scotty and Benny, could be me, Scotty and Dan. Yeah. You know, me and Brooke write quite a bit together um, because we just we just really enjoy writing together. She's just um, a magician at melodies. Yeah. Um, just when you can sing like she can, she can just hear melodies that I just go, where the did you come up with that? <laughs> but we don't have to be, we don't have to be polite with each other either, which is we're really good at co-write. Sometimes it's hard to co-write with strangers because you're sitting there being polite, but... Um, you know, I could just come up with a lyric idea and Brooke would go, what? Yeah. That's terrible. And vice versa, if she can say something and I'll go, what are you going on about there, woman? You think we'll probably see Brooke coming in to do a spot or some harmonies on this next album as well again, mate? I don't know. We didn't even plan to have her on the second album. But we... Sounds so good, though. Oh, man... <laughs> Nick Sadia came to my house to do some of the vocals. We just, um, he was awesome. We'd done some at Byron Bay at the studio and then what we didn't get done, he came and just hung out at our place. And um, we had no intention of having Brooke on the album at all for harmonies or for uh, But when you know there's a voice that close to where you're recording and that good, yeah. It's hard for it not to come up, you know. Yeah. She's standing in the kitchen, I'm in the shed. 
well, I can't know what it sounds good there. <laughs> and really, no obstacles. I've just got to go down to the house and drag her up there. <laughs> but she'd just walk in and go, run. Yeah. It's magic. She can bloody sing the Chinese menu and it sounds a million bucks. And I, I also <laughs> think the the other good thing about that is, I mean, you, I mean, you guys, your natural blend, your natural tone when you and Brooke sing together, it's, it's nearly like sibling. Like, it's crazy. It just works. Some a, some male-female male tones don't work, but it actually really <laughs> works, you know? <laughs> Man, we, you know what? We really dig. Like, we, when we get a chance, we'll do some um, gigs together and stuff as well, and we really dig doing it. And uh, and I'd, I'd say... Again, we probably won't go in with a solid plan to have Brooke on the album, but it'll happen. It, it'll probably happen. It'll happen <laughs> for the same reason as the last one and the same reason as well, the one before. You're always going to come up against this thing too, mate. And again, this is the reality of it. Who are you going to get that's better? Yeah, well, that's kind of a I good mean, point. That's what it's going to come down to. Is is if you're going to get a female part on a song, then you you, you listen for tone. Yep. And no one's yeah. gonna beat no one's gonna beat Brooke's tone, you know. So uh, she's pretty magic. Big shout out to Brooke. <laughs> Hi, Brooke. Good yeah, day. I might be biased, but yeah. I agree with you. No, no, no. I think, I think we're pretty right with that. All right, Mick. Talking about big questions, Adam. Um, what do you reckon that the third album might be called, mate? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> are we, we going to get adventurous with the third album title or? Well, it's kind of tricky now. It's, <laughs> because we've got the first and the second one, it's like, mm. is is calling the third one, the third album, too predictable? Or... Do we call it two and a half? It, well, it could be the, the second first album or something like that, maybe. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's heavy, man. But you can't I'm do that. I'm just wondering, you if we change the title now, is that too predictable? You know? Oh, yes. I don't know. You can't call it the second first album because that's just going to break my head. Man, don't do that. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that to people because it's like, man, no. That's cruel, man. Don't you do that. You know what? We'll, we'll probably be as unorganised as we were on the first two, hence the <laughs> title. It wasn't some grand plan. We just simply got to the time when the record labels go, we really need a title so we can get this, this artwork done. And we're like... Oh no, we didn't really think about that, did we, fellas? Well, you know what, mate? I, I, I'm gonna, I'll make a prediction here. I, I hope you go with the third album. And as for the, is it too predictable? Well, I want it to be because I want it to sound like Adam Eckersley band. And I'll be buying, <laughs> I'll be buying the album because I'll expect something now from you guys, exactly similar to the first and second one. You just got to keep moving me through your journey. But yeah, you, you guys yeah, are man, predictable. That's, that's very cool. Yeah. You, you guys, it makes you guys it easy are to predictable. Put them in order too on the shelf. Okay. Well, it's a, it's a it's a really cool thing because how many artists do we see now and we grow to love? Then all of a sudden they have a brain fart and they want to change, and all of a sudden it's like, who is this? I don't know who this what person is. There? You know, yeah. I love that you well, guys are predictable. Well, thinking of doing a whole Madonna covers album. Is that aligns with what you talked about? Yeah, yeah, no. I'd uh, yeah, <laughs> I want to be one of the dancing girls. Oh. Yeah, you got the job, man. I'll do it, man. I'll tell you what, I'd pay money to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people would. We'd make some money on that. That'll be all right. Yeah, the two of that gangbusters, I reckon. <laughs> hey, Ads, I've got a, got a question for you, mate. You guys get out and about, and you're you's pretty much out around the market all the time, and you, you know, you're getting around the festivals, and all the boys in the bands are out and about. Is there anyone that that's caught your eye over the last year or a couple of years since you've been out that you're going, wow, here's a talent, this is one to watch? Have you got anyone that you're thinking might be a hot prospect? Actually, the weekend just gone, um, we had a show up up the coast and um, we put together, it's kind of, it was just a little day thing, there's about six bands or whatever. But anyway, this young fella, um, 16, I hadn't heard him, a friend of ours um, suggested we get him, he was a local lad, blah, 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 went to school with their son all this sort of business, and he'd been on the X Factor and all that sort of stuff. I'm, I'm not exactly sure how far he went through. But, um, man, his name was Blake O'Connor. Sings like a bird. 16 years old, good fella. But, um, yes, I reckon he's certainly got a long career. Blake O'Connor. Um, where's he from? Check him out. Port Macquarie. 
He's a Port Macquarie kid, okay. All right. Port Macquarie kid. So mid North Coast. Check him out. He's just got a brilliant voice and vibe, and plays great guitar and. Um, Port Macquarie. Yeah, no, he's really good. All right. Well, there you go. You heard it first. Um, but also, the few that I've sort of really dug for a while, um, Kari Haywood. I think she's magic. She's great. She's yeah, beautiful. she's really good. She does. Yeah. She's just got her own thing going on, and uh, the way she plays and sings and combines the two and. Her vibe, uh, I reckon she'll she'll do awesome. I love watching her. Um, Judah Kelly, he's yeah. just great. She, Everyone loves Judah. How good does he sing? Isn't oh, it man, silly? It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> just there, I, I was fair dinkum. How do you be if you woke up in the morning and just went la 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 like he does and it's like, eh, that's I'd, just warming I'd be up. I'm pretty happy actually. I know. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it crazy? It's just not on. It's, really. effort, it's effortless, man. I tell you. Yeah. Yeah, he'll put something up. Oh, I've got the flu or whatever. I and know. He's going to... Yeah. <laughs> he's got some pipes out, boy. He's good on the guitar he's too, Judah. He's having a crack now, uh, so... Um, can't, can't wait for um, his new music. He's a nice kid too. So. Yeah, he is. Kid, he's 20 now. I'm still calling him a yeah. kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It just means we're all getting older. You yeah, know? we're getting old, exactly. Hey, Ads, now you're heading off into Tamworth, mate. You'd be uh, you'd be sort of starting to get your bags all in line and head off to the festival. What do you got in Tamworth? Where are you playing? Yeah, we're going to see you. Yeah, sure. We're, we're doing um, two shows at Tamworth. We're doing one on the first Saturday, which is the 21st. And we're doing that as a... All acoustic. Uh, you know, it will be all our stuff that we we do normally, but just arranged a bit differently and Benny on uh, maybe the tempo. a different song. Yeah, you're gonna put Benny on the box. Not sure exactly. He might do a little bit of different sort of stuff, but yeah. um, man, even Benny playing just with his hands on a kit is magic. You know, yeah. the dynamic range he's got and whatever. But Cool. Yeah, we just kind of wanted to do two different show, totally different shows. So the first one on the Saturday is acoustic. We're going to have some friends, you know, join us and have a jam with us and what have you. Um, and then the second show is Friday the 27th. Now, where, where are these shows? Are they both at the same spot? Both at the same spot at the Albert Hotel in the Marquee stage out the back. Yep, out the back. Cool. Um, it's a great venue. So they're going to be... Two totally different shows, but they're both going to be awesome fun, and um, people should totally come to both of them. Now, did you say the last Saturday is too? No, the last Friday. Oh, the night 27th. before the goal guitars. All right, cool. I'm yep. just saying, anyone Friday, who put yourself up against the GGs. The 21st. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, I think uh, I think we'll go along and have a look. We will definitely now, come along and have a look. If I asked you, Mr. Adam Eckersley, which show we should go and see... Which one would you be advising us? Now, you know what you got in store for both. They're both different shows. Which one do you think both Jay and myself should come and watch? You've got to come to both. I can't, can't pick. No, I'm asking you to pick. Which one has free Even beer? Even if you come to half of both of them. <laughs> They're both going to have free beer because he'll be on stage. We're going to hit his rider. <laughs> Either way, your rider is gone, buddy, if we get there. <laughs> You've only got time to make it a one. Just um, come to half of both of them so it makes up one full one. Well done, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a good answer. That's a real good answer. All right, okay, done. We'll, all right, okay, so we better schedule both of him in. Okay. We'll go to Adam on go. the first week and Eckersley on the second week. That's it. That's there we go. That sounds that's good. I like that. Nice, I reckon. Now, uh, mate, now we, where can people click through? And uh, we're gonna obviously we're going to make sure all your, your links, your website, and all this stuff is down below. But where do you want people to go, mate? You got a website, you got a Facebook. What's all your social gizmo things? Yeah, we've got all that sort of business. But the um, adameckersleyband.com website, uh, just the Facebook, Adam Eckersley Band. We've got the Instagram and all that sort of stuff too. What's your favourite yeah. one, mate? Do you like Facebook or Instagram? Which one? Oh, what? you know what? To be honest, I don't particularly like any of them, but <laughs> I've kind of got... I'm more of a clue about Facebook than any of the others. I'm hopeless. I'm really hopeless. <laughs> Luckily, um, at some point in time, a fair while ago, uh, I accepted that I wasn't really good at it. And we've we've got some help in Alana from Loaded Gun Social. She's awesome. She keeps us on track and makes sure people knows where we're playing and what we're doing. 
Do you like doing the live crosses, the Facebook Live? Do you, do you find that fun? Uh, I, there's definitely aspects that I really dig. I think it's great that, you know, like we're in Europe and people could log in and watch yeah. what we're doing, which is just awesome. Mm. You know, it's got its... It's it's never going to be the same as being at a live gig, which I don't think it's trying to um, compete with it or not. I guess it's, you got no, you got no idea if... If someone's doing live stream and you either say something stupid or just have a major <laughs> screw up and that and it's the internet forever, you know, like if you just have a brain fart and, and just mess up a song deluxe and then it's out there forever. I guess the aim is to not, not do that, but it does happen from time to time. Well, that, I mean, yeah, you, you know, it is a it is a balancing game, isn't it? Because sometimes that's the best part of the live gig. However, it's probably the worst part of the live stream. Yeah. yeah, that's right. You know, and that's that's a double-edged sword there because unless you're in that moment at your crowd, you're not really feeling what's happening. And it could be awesome there, but watching it here, you're not connecting because there's it's there's a wall up, right? Mm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so exactly. that is pretty tough. That is pretty tough. But it's, but it's a different. Um, it's just a different world, eh? It's it's happening, and you know, it's hopefully, and I, I guess. Maybe a bit of the flow-on effect will be more people will keep up with you, so they'll become more invested in what you're doing. And then if you do come to town, they'll kind of go, "Hey, this is that band I've been checking out." And yeah. Whatever helps helps the live gig. That's kind of we love playing live, and we want to do it forever, and we want people to find out about us so they come to our live gig. So whatever helps that. Yeah. Is good. Hello, honey. Hi. Do you want to say hello? Hi. Hello. Hello. Doesn't stuff. I've got to get ready for a party. Yeah. Hey, boys. <laughs> hey, Brookie. Hello, Brook. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say she hasn't got a face done up? <laughs> oh, God bless her. She doesn't need a face. she got a beautiful one. <laughs> I know. She's getting getting ready for Tiggles' party. Oh, oh birthday party. Well, yes, we better, we better let over. you go and do that too, Yeah, in saying that, mate, we better let you go and dress up as... Uh, what Are you going to dress up as a weird character? You, got, you have something going on, surely. Oh, I think Tiggs and probably a friend sing on Weird enough as it is, so <laughs> I just, I just, I just, She's not a not a Wiggles kid or something like that, mate, or <laughs> I should have done that, eh? Hmm. I'm slack. Oh no, back to Bunnings. Back to Bunnings for you. Back to Bunnings. <laughs> <laughs> back to Bunnings. Adam Eckersley, it's been a pleasure to sit down with you, mate, on your day off and uh, and spend a bit of your time. It, it's it's such cool to sit down and have a really good yak with you. And uh, we're going to keep in touch with you in Tamworth. We're going to come and find you. Mate, good luck with uh, Tig's birthday party. Shout out to your beautiful wife, Brooke. We, we love everything about Brookie. <laughs> and uh, on behalf of Jay and myself and everyone in the country music world, man, we wish Adam Eckersley Band all the best in the future. And you're a cool guy, and we highly recommend that everyone goes out and you will have a musical moment at an Adam Eckersley band show and you should definitely go and see these guys. So Absolutely. We wish you the best, man. Thank you so much. And, Thanks, Adam. Uh, we'll catch you again Cheers, real soon. Cheers, fellas. Cheers, mate. See you, mate. Good on you. I'll see you up north again. I'll, I'll see you in Tenworth first anyway, but we'll get back up there soon too. Absolutely. Awesome. Good on you, fellas. Cheers. Did you like that interview and want to see some more just like it? Then check them out right there. We've got artist interviews, we've got the CMW Country Artist of the Week chart as voted by you, and we also have heaps of weekly prize giveaways. So give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, because together we can make a difference in the, in the country, country music, music world. world.